Oh, blimey. It's all a bit of a mess in here today. Challenge for today is to get this out of this. Let's have a go, shall we? Symbol bleed gets everywhere, really messy. So you've just got a mix in and there's a lot of spill on the toms and various things. You want to get rid of it. Just say, for instance, you want to keep the drums natural and not use sample replacement on stuff. There's a few little things you can do. Gates and expanders, you know, they've got their place. They're really good. They're great for live and, and great for certain scenarios on certain parts of the kit. But if you've got a, a, a busy section where perhaps the drummer's got the cymbals too low, couple of single strokes and a kick and cymbal bash just afterwards that's going to really interfere with the sustain of the tom and the tone from the tom to be honest the actual note of the tom so you've got the the overall sort of sound you want from your cymbals and, and you've got this bleed coming through off the tom you're going to get these horrible bursts of uh, just harshness and nastiness the transient information is a short duration sound at the beginning of a waveform it's basically noise. White noise is a kind of audible spectrum, a range of say 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, where there's an equal distribution of all the frequencies. Then you get pink noise, which also is what they call broadband, but usually it's, it's slightly heavier or deeper in the lower frequencies, kind of an increase in power as opposed to what you get in the higher frequencies. And then you get what they call sonic hues in between, which is why I called it noise. So you've got the transient, which, as I said, is this short duration of noise. And that's where a lot of your high, that's all your high end information is coming in. If you look at the peak of, say, a drum hit, you can get a transient designer where you can actually change the time the signal takes to rise to the full amplitude. Or and you can increase that slightly so it's sharper again. Uh, and the, the decay is much sharper from the top into the transient or you can decrease it so there's a slight rise to, to take some of the edge off. But once you get past the transient information, you get into the, the tonal stuff. That's where you get all this interference, really, and that's the bit you want to hear ringing out. I mean, you might want thuddy, sort of 70s pillow-type toms. Well, that's that's fine. You know, there's, there's not a lot of sustain on those. There's just a, a dull thud. But if you've got nicely tuned toms with a steady decay, you want to hear that in your mix. With gates and expanders, Conceptually, I suppose, uh, gates and expanders are similar to compressors and limiters because they change the signal level. But whereas you kind of attenuate signals that exceed a certain threshold with a compressor and a limiter, with a gate and an expander, expander set to an infrequent ratio, you're basically taking anything below the threshold rather than what's going above it, and you're lowering that. So with a gate, if it's below the threshold, it's it basically closes it off. There's no sound. They work brilliantly depending on your recording. You might want a little bit of that ringing around in the kit so that you've got the whole thing coming through. But that's totally dependent on the style and the sort of the kind of overall vibe you're going for. A lot of people will mute the toms in between hits and then automate that. They pop up and then they disappear. But when you're muting, it's it's a sudden, you know, you're stopping it dead. And if, if you haven't got your automation quite right, it might mute again before the, the toms had a chance to to decay nicely and end, so you'll get a sudden stop. So muting is not always the best, so it's probably best to automate your volume, basically. I'm gonna get into OBS here and skip over into Cubase and go over some of these things and show you what I've done to try and clean up some toms in a quite busy passage. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with the results, so let's, um, let's have a look. This is Cubase. Um, I love this program, I've been with it for so many years. I, and I, I also love Reaper and a couple of other doors, but this is my, Definitely my favourite for recording and editing. So I soloed the two the two toms in this particular track on this section. There's the rack tom and the floor tom. This is a quite a busy section where there's lots of uh, single stroke rolls on the on the snare. You can see all these hits here, and there'll be lots of crashing. But you can see on the floor tom here that the hits aren't all really hard. There's some quite light ones, 
And to try and deal with these with a gate or expander, it, it's virtually impossible, even if you've got a sidechain and you can select the band in which you want the, the gate to listen to, it's still really difficult because th these are very, very low hits. So I'll go, I'll demonstrate that now. I'll just play this now quickly so you can hear this. This has got nothing on at the moment and you'll hear the amount of spill going on off these two toms. Nasty, nasty. Lots of nastiness. Right, so if I play the same passage again, I've just put uh, a kilohertz gate on here and I've twiddled with this for ages to try and get it to work. I've got look ahead on and I've tried to balance it with the tolerance and everything. And it, you know, it gates quite well. It won't stop. The cymbal crashes on the tail of it where the tone of the drum is and the odd snare hit gets through. So it's not really good enough, but I'll play this. Pretty messy, not so clever. These are in an odd place on here, by the way, because I was using the expander in the Schweppes Omni channel, but that's turned off and I've just positioned them here just to demonstrate. If I try swapping to the built-in stock, I've um, basically got the side chain on and I've centered it to a frequency that's a stronger frequency on the toms and tried to cue it so that I could get it as to cut as much of the other rubbish out as possible there. And it's done, it's doing a good job, but it's still not quite there. So if you have a listen. So yeah, managed to get the snares out of the way, but there's still the horrible crashing of cymbals, which is kind of ruining it. And th those will burst through and, and really mess up your mix. So let's turn that off. This is a free plugin uh, called Multigate. I'll put the link in the description below. It's from a developer called Mowai Audio Tools. It's a multiband gate. It's a fantastic bit of kit. And this, this gets you a little bit closer because you can change the bandwidth you want to, to gate and leave the rest to it. So this combined with volume automation actually does a really good job. I'll just play this now without the volume automation so you can hear it. Sounds pretty nasty on its own, but with volume automation now, you can get rid of all the snare hits, and that's kind of dealing with the cymbals quite well. So let me just pop back over to the main window and just open these up so we can see what we've got going on. You can see I've um, just quickly gone in and done the little bit of volume automation. I've pulled down, literally, I've, I've selected the selector tool in, in, in Cubase and dragged sort of in between the various hits like that down here. And then you can just simply drag it out of the way and it's down to zero. I prefer having a curve set on the volume so that it, it's more natural when it decays. Otherwise, if it's squared off, it'll just it'll zip down and you might as well be muting it then because you're not getting that roll off the fade, basically. This is using the Mugwai multiband gate with volume automation. This makes a big difference. Doing a fantastic job. Getting rid of all those horrible crashy symbols. So if I put the automation in now for the EQ, what I've actually done is added frequency, which is a stock EQ plugin in Cubase. And literally it's a low pass filter set to 1000 Hertz or one kilohertz with 24 octave shelf. So not, massively steep but you know enough and all i'm doing is is uh, automating it coming on and off at the right time because you can do this with any eq as long as you you know you can put it in a, a, a low pass or a high cut it should be absolutely fine so i'm going to switch back to the main window one thing with cubase so that's not actually cutting off the initial attack of the transient i've had to set it back this far from the beginning of the hit to actually get that to come through. There's a delay compensation, not sure what's happening, but this is the end result. Great. So with a bit of volume automation, uh, a little bit of high cut, uh, low pass automation set to 1K, uh, 1000 Hertz, 
just turning that on and off with your automation, you can get really good results without spending a fortune on tools that just aren't going to make that difference. I'm going to put this in context now. I'm going to try and put something else in. Let's see if I can drop the overheads in. So we've just got the symbols from the overheads coming through now. If I was to turn this automation off, you'll hear how bad it is. It's already horrible. I'm just going to go quickly go back to the mixer, turn these off, and try the Cubase built-in gate, which is doing a reasonable job. It doesn't deal with the symbols though, so this should get rid of the, the snare hits and clean that up, but you'll still hear this horrible... Um, you'll hear. Here we go. just nasty. The toms are EQ'd so that they cut and, and we're getting the, the top end of the, the tone that we want from the transient, but you don't want that spilling through over everything. So let me just put the um, automation back in for both of them. I'm going to quickly take out the gate again and put that back on. And now we can hear There you go. No snares coming through, no horrible honky uh, sort of nasty upper mids coming through off the, the bleed on the toms, so the cymbals are still sweet, and you've got the decay and the sustain of the, of the note of the drum still ringing. All from a crappy tom track. So I'm going to put that in context with the whole thing now. Just unmute everything. Now I'm going to quickly turn off the low pass. Thing. I'm just going to go with um, the stock gate from Cubase, which has got the built-in sidechain. But this is the difference. If you if you listen hard, listen to the, the spill off the cymbals on the toms now. I've just thrown this bit in with a, another alternative way of processing your toms. This is using Cubase's direct offline processing, which is a fantastic feature, especially if your processor is struggling. You can start to shift your real-time processing and everything that's hitting your CPU hard over to the direct offline. If you press F7, function key 7 on your keyboard, you can bring up the direct offline processing. And um, you can process stuff, your generic sort of um, built-in simple commands with Cubase, or you can use any of your VST plugins. So this is really good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slice these up now rather than using automation and just apply it to the track. So first thing I want to do is just use Alt on my keyboard or Command, I think it is on a Mac, not totally sure. I'll just quickly cut these outside of the loot area I've got up here. Now... I'm going to zoom in to the beginning of the first hit. I've got snap to zero crossing on just to make things a bit quicker. It doesn't doesn't have to be perfect, but it just once you zoom into a certain point, it starts to snap in nicely. So I'll zip through these and I'll swap back and forth between the tracks. It doesn't matter if it's not absolutely spot on. I mean, we're, we're talking very small amounts there, so you won't really notice that. So. Oh, it's a bit tedious. What I'm going to do now is um, highlight all of the bits I don't want. So I don't want that. I don't want the bit before. I don't want any of that. Just scroll across all that. Just unmute that one. Yeah, that's good. If you go to the uh, mute key now, using your right button on your mouse, or you can use the tool palette up here, or you can use one of the one to nine keys on your on your keyboard, and then hold shift down, it should mute all of those set pieces now. So they're all out of the way now. Oh, I missed one. Let me just quickly mute that one as well. And I'm going to do the same down here. So what do we want? Oh, I haven't cut that one. So just coming back in quickly. 
There we go. Uh, let's highlight these. And shift with mute. So they're gone, and now zoom in so I can see the transient and the sort of steady decay, the steady state. Just pick a point with zero crossing still on, roughly where it starts to level out. Yep, that's it. So they're all split now. So what you can do now is you can take all of your tails and if you press F7 on your keyboard to bring up the direct offline processing, that should give you the option to load plugins. So I'm going to load in frequency because that's what I was using on the main track. And I did save it just for ease as Tom filter in here. So you can see I've got the, the shelf in there. And just hit apply on all of those pieces. And there you go, you can see it's processed 10, which is what I've selected. If I continue highlighting all of these sections, and just put a crossfade in between the transient and the tail, which is pressing X on the keyboard. All the crossfades are in. So now when we play back, we should have all of the, the brightness we want, and then this with the low pass or high cut on. You select all of your tails. Just simply draw in a fade. I don't want to be fading too quickly, so I'm going to double click above the line which opens up the, the fade panel and change that to a curve that I prefer. So it just keeps it fuller right to the end. I'm going to play that back now and we'll see what that sounds like. Oh great, this one I left too long so that snare hits it's not really a problem, I'm sure it wouldn't affect the mix, but you could just literally grab the the in between the two pieces and drag this one way. And that should position it where you want it. And it'll keep the fade information and just mute whatever you drag. So let's see what that sounds like now. Great. Um, works works brilliantly. So the nice thing about doing it like this, like I said, is you've got, if you click on any of these and hit F7, you can see the effects you've got applied. If you want to undo it, you can just simply click here and delete, or you can make it permanent, entirely up to you. But if you don't want any damage done to the original waveforms you got part of the session, you can leave it in a non-destructive state like that. And you've still kept all of the other bits in between if ever you decide you want to mix it differently. So rather than just deleting all this, the information's all still there, which is good. It's good to hang on to. That's another alternative. I'll just put the whole track in, just have a listen. Works a treat no horrible symbol spill. If you've got a great mix and there's not too much spill and depending on the genre or whatever you're going for, let me just go back to that one, a gate or an expander might just be just enough. It's completely dependent on the source material. But if you get tracks a mix sent to you where you've got a lot of this and you don't want to use sample replacement and the gates and expanders aren't cutting it, then it takes a little bit of effort, but it doesn't take long. It really doesn't just to zip through most modern doors have a similar thing to Cubase where it's just as quick. That's my little bit on cleaning rubbish out of Tom recordings. I hope this has been helpful. I'm going to go and keep fiddling and uh, I'll be back with, uh, with some other little tips and tricks. I hope you find this useful. If you like it, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe. Like I said in my last video, this, that encourages me to do more. And uh, I shall uh, be back soon with something else. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye.